So you've been dealing with this man and things have gotten a little rocky. There's been some bumps in the road and you're at a point where you're trying to determine should you continue dealing with him? Should you keep trying with this man? And I'm going to make it very clear for you if you need to move forward or if it's time to let him go. Let's talk about it. There's a lot of you, a lot of women out there. It may not be you, it may be friends, it may be family, dealing with a guy, holding off a dear life, hoping things will change, hoping things can get better, or wondering, can it get better? Not sure, not sure if you're letting go too soon, not sure how much longer you should give him, and it gets confusing, it's stressing you out, it is, it is wearing you the hell down. And so we need to resolve that once and for all. And that's why I'm going to give you things that you need to look for when trying to evaluate if you, if you should keep trying with him. All right. So let's get to it. So the first thing is ask yourself, why do you even want him? You probably weren't expecting that one, right? But I need you to really go within yourself first, because a lot of times when trying to determine if you should deal with a guy or, you know, this relationship is worth it. The woman is looking at the man, is evaluating everything from the surface, but you're missing what you need to evaluate from within first. So why do you even want him? I had a client one time who was holding on for dear life, dealing with a guy uh, who was not stable financially, was not stable emotionally, all right? It was a very toxic relationship. And so... After talking to her and her giving me the whole story, I had to ask her, why do you want this guy? Help me understand what is it about him? And when she laid out the things and things were like, well, essentially she felt like she, he wouldn't cheat on her. Things like uh, he, she felt like she, he valued her for more than how she looked and, and so on and so forth. All right. And the reality was that the desire for him in that scenario was because it, he was safe. She thought he was the safe choice and that with him, she wouldn't have to go through what she went through with other men. But unfortunately, the safe choice tends to be the wrong choice. And a lot of times the safe choice can turn into a very toxic choice. And so in trying to understand why you even wanted him, we can get to the source of the problem because her desire for him was it really about him and, and how he pours into her? It really wasn't about the quality of the relationship. It wasn't about connection. It was about the fact that I think I don't have to deal with the crap I had to deal with before. But you're dealing with new crap. New nonsense that is still breaking you down. So what are you really getting here? And, and, and the reality was also, as we continue the conversation, the reason why she wanted him was because she thought he had potential. Now, a lot of y'all have dealt with dating potential. And the unfortunate risk of this is that a lot of people don't live up to their potential. And a lot of times what you're holding on to is an imaginary figure of this person. You're holding on to what you hope they will become, but they, they may not even see that within themselves. And, and the obstacles that they're going to have to overcome to even become that person may not be something they are willing to face. And here's the crazy part. When you're dating someone and you want them because of the potential you see in them, what you don't realize is you are undermining their ability to even reach it. Because essentially, you are incentivizing their low-level self. Now, I say low-level not to be disrespectful, but just to speak reality. They are at a, the lower version of their self right now. They're not at, you know, again, at their potential. And so essentially, if it's almost like a job hires you and a job says, the job requires you have a master's to work here, a master's degree, but says to you, I'm going to hire you anyway. And in the meantime, you can get the master's while you're working here, all right? Now, if getting the master's is easy, then you might still get it even though your job already hired you. But the minute the master's, getting the master's gets hard, you're gonna give up on getting it. Why? Because you have the job anyway. You're already getting paid. You're already receiving the benefits. There's no incentive to get past the hard part. There's no incentive to climb past this mountain when you're already getting everything you desire anyway. So when you're with this man 
who you're seeing this potential. You're feeding him. You're sexing him. You're pouring into him. You're taking care of him. What is his incentive to become a better man? If, if becoming a better man was easy, then yes, he may still do it. But when the reality is that him becoming a better man is going to be him having to heal. That's hard as hell. I don't care who you are, man or woman, healing is not the easiest thing. Facing your past is not the easiest thing. You need to do it. I want you to do it, but it's not easy. And so a lot of people are going to stop short of pushing through the process of healing. Let's say he needs to get himself financially. Well, listen, grinding, working hard, taking initiative, especially when you're a man who has not learned how to do that already, that can be a difficult process. And again, if you are already pouring into him, if you are already giving him the benefits, where's his incentive to move past the hard part? It's gone, it's not there. So it's important for you to understand why you want him, and if it's attached to potential, if it's attached to fear, I don't want to be alone, I don't want to go through another relationship, then you're in the wrong place to begin with. We don't even have to worry about, well, all the other stuff with him, and can he do this, and will he fix that? Listen, the reason you're even got, you even got into this relationship is because you haven't healed. The reason why you're entertaining this man who's at his lower level self is because you have not healed. You have work you need to deal with, deal with it, deal within yourself. And the reality is that being with this man is distracting you from the work that you need to do. Being with this man is giving you a scapegoat to not face your issues because you get to focus on his nonsense and ignore yours. And that's very unhealthy. So please understand when you are trying to determine if you should keep trying with this man, you got to start with why are you even there? Why do you even want him? Why do, are you even holding on to this individual? All right. And that can, that can be applied whether you're just dating the guy or you're already in a relationship with the guy. So now the next thing, and it's kind of piggybacking off this previous point, is do you really love him or are you just attached? So again, this is another question that starts with looking within yourself. Now, if you are just dating this guy, then it's unfair to ask you if you love him already, all right? And, and so this might apply more to those of you who are already in the relationship. Or maybe, yes, you may have been dating him long enough to where you can determine if it's love or attachment. Either way, let's focus on that. Is it love or is it attachment? So. A lot of women have convinced themselves that they love this man, that the reason why they want to make it work is because they love him. And here's what I have learned that a lot of people do, sometimes consciously and sometimes subconsciously, okay? They use the label of love to validate and defend remaining in a toxic situation. And I always say, love does not keep you where you do not belong. So do not try to use love to defend yourself. And some people do it on purpose because they know if they have to say to their friends and family, I'm only with him because I'm afraid to be alone, they're going to tell you to leave. I'm only with him because I don't want to start all over, they're going to tell you to leave. I'm only with him because this, no, I will not even say the sex is good because unfortunately you say the sex is good and some people might say, okay, I understand why you're there, <laughs> which is unfortunate, but that does happen. But the, the reality is that she, that woman understands that by saying I'm with him because I love him, it makes it harder for people to now say to her, you still need to leave him. And so it's used as a scapegoat and, and, and again, it's a trap that you're falling into by convincing yourself of this. You've got to be real with yourself and really understand what's going on here. So when you're trying to determine, well, how do I know it's love or it is an attachment? Okay, again, it kind of goes back to the first question. Why do you really want this man? What's really driving all of this? Now, here's another example. I had a different client where she came to me and she was going through all kinds of problems with her man. And I'm like, all right, she gave me the whole rundown. And I said, okay, uh, she said uh, she loves him. And I said, well, why do you love him? 
And she gave me all this list of reasons. And when she was done with the list, I said, do you realize that everything on that list is what you do for him? What the hell does he do for you? And she went silent. She, she, she did not know what to say for like a good minute. And she was like, damn, you're right. He doesn't do anything for me. And so when you cannot even point to how this person pours into your life or what positive impact they have on your life, how can you now say to me this is about love? When all you can point to is underlying things or again, all that you do for him, or if you're honest with yourself, when it's really about fear, as I mentioned multiple times, fear of being alone, fear of starting over, uh, hell, fear of my biological clock is ticking and I need to find somebody, Fear of my family is giving me pressure to be in a relationship. Fear of all my friends are getting married. I need to hurry up. There's so many different things that contribute to the fear or the anxiousness or the desire to attach yourself to someone who really isn't best for you. And then again, then to, then to, then to tell people it's love because you're trying to fight you're trying to create a, a validation for staying there and trying to hold on to it, all right? But you've got to be real with yourself. Is it love or is it attachment? And so attachment is going to be about the fear. Attachment is going to be about the potential. That doesn't even exist right now. It's what you're hoping it becomes. The attachment is going to be about uh, just other underlying issues, but not really about two people who have a connection. And that's the thing. If it's real love, there'll be a connection there. If it's real love, it'll be two people pouring into each other. If it's real love, it's two people who can be themselves with each other. And if that does not exist within the dynamic, that you, then you cannot tell me it's real love. But I get it. It's easy to confuse these other things with love, but this is what you have to take a step back and understand. Because again, if you are able to determine that what you have here is not genuine love, then we don't even have to get to the part of what he is doing or not doing. That, those, those first two questions I put out for you are the foundation to understanding should you even bother trying with this man? Should, is this man even for you to begin with? Because if he's not, then it doesn't matter. Hell, I don't care if he even is doing all these great things. If the underlying issues are there, if, if at the end of the day this is about attachment and not love, then I cannot encourage you to remain in that relationship. So you got to be willing to really evaluate that stuff about yourself and what's going on within you before we turn the focus on to him. But I'm going to now give you the next step that's about him. Have you fully expressed yourself to him? All right. So I'm a firm believer that you have to address the issues before you are, are quick to cut someone off or before you attempt to walk away from the situation. It is best to discuss things or to communicate things. Now, when I say discuss or communicate, communication can be non-verbally. And what I mean by that is you can write a letter to express yourself. And, and personally, I'm, excuse me. And personally, I'm a firm believer that writing a letter is actually way more effective than trying to talk verbally, at least initially to get everything out. It allows you to make sure you get everything on the table. It allows you to make sure your tone is right. It allows you to make sure that you're conveying the message in the most effective manner possible. It also allows the receiver of the message more time to process it allows them to read, not to rebuttal. Because when we're talking to each other, sometimes people are listening to rebuttal. But when they're reading a letter, they are, it's allowing them to soak it in. It allows them to, it can marinate, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And, and they can really now consider what's being said more fully. And then after the letter, there can be a verbal discussion that is now with the foundation of the letter setting the stage for how the discussion will go. So I do think that you have to consider, all right, have I expressed myself to him? And the reality is that if you are going to express yourself verbally, it's not, well, you had an argument with him. It's not that you lashed out at him. Those don't count as having fully expressed yourself. You have to be able to say you fully expressed yourself in a calm and loving manner. 
Because the reality is that anytime someone feels attacked, they're going to get defensive. Anytime someone feels like you're coming at them the wrong way, it's going to be harder for them to receive your message or even process your message. So if we're trying to really evaluate if we can give this person a chance, if you can move forward with this man, then you've got to make sure you've expressed yourself in the most effective manner possible, and that is in a calm and loving manner. Now, when you can say you've done that, all right, now we can consider the next steps that are about him on if you can move forward or not. So now the, the next step, which now shifts the focus onto the man, is, is he making an effort and is he making progress, all right? So let's, let's cover it. You, you've already evaluated that, okay, you believe this is the guy for you, that you are there for genuine good reasons, that there is love here, all right? You've also fully expressed yourself to this man. Okay, great. So we've covered the basis. Now it's about, is he even trying? The reality is that some of you have been in or are in a relationship where you have done these things, where you have expressed yourself fully, and this man is dismissing you. He's calling you crazy. He is dancing around the issue. He's turning the tables on you. He's making it about anything else but him. He's taking no accountability, and therefore, he's making no effort, and therefore, there is no progress. So why the hell would you continue? And I've seen some of you try to still drag along, try to still make it work. But what you can't make it work if you're working by yourself. You can't make it work if this man is not embracing what needs to be improved upon in the relationship. So it's important that, yes, after you've covered the bases, you've got to evaluate. Now, listen, I did not say he needs to be perfect tomorrow. He's not going to get it all right. Depending on what the issue is, some things may take some time for him to really get the habit of, really get in a groove of it. But that's why it's about effort and progress. And you've got to make sure, though, and here's something that's very important, and I, and I have to say even more important if you are married, because I've seen this happen so many times. Let's just paint the picture. You're dealing with this man, and let's say for a while he's been, he's been acting real messed up and, and what you determine to be messed up is up to you all right but he's done some things that you weren't happy with for a while and let's just say you didn't always fully express yourself or you did but it may have been arguments lashing out it may not have been that calm loving approach anyways there's been a time frame of unhealthy behaviors that have not created some toxic energy all right so now you two are trying to work on things and trying to see if we can make it better and what i've seen for a lot of women is all right, now that we're working on it, it's because he's been the one messing up or because he's been the one in your eyes doing the unhealthy things, you want to take a, a wait and see approach of him being consistent with the good action before you're willing to pour back into him. So let's just say at this point, you're not as intimate with him anymore or at this point, you're not as sweet to him anymore. But in your mind, it's like, well, I'm justified because he's been acting all funky this whole time. So it's on him now to get it right before I can trust that I can now open my heart back up to him. But that is an approach that's going to shoot you in the foot. That will derail any progress. That will derail or devalue his efforts. That will cause him to be frustrated. And you will not be able to truly see if you guys can now make it past this issue and, and have a better relationship. So it's important that after you have fully expressed yourself, that you are also making the efforts with him to be better, all right? And I'm gonna get a little bit more into that in a further point, but just understand that while evaluating his effort, while evaluating the progress, you've gotta be meeting his energy. You got to be making sure that you're pouring into him during that time as well and not just sitting back and evaluating because that's only going to undermine the whole situation. So now the next thing, and I, I kind of, it should have been before the previous one, <laughs> but it's a little out of order, but just work with me here. So the next thing to consider is, is the issue fixable? All right. So. The reality is that when people come to me, when couples come to me, when singles come to me, whoever, and they come for coaching, and we're, we're dealing with somebody, 
and we're trying to determine can this be fixed, we have to really ask ourselves, okay, how correctable is this? Is this issue a symptom of who this person is or simply a symptom of a misunderstanding between you two? All right. So, for example, let's just say uh, he's a homebody. This may be a very small example, but just work with me here. He's a homebody. He doesn't like going out. All right. But you're very extroverted. You love going out. You want to be able to enjoy yourself. And you talk about the issue with him, all right? And he says to you, well, this is how I am. I just don't care for going out. That's not my thing. That's not really fixable. Now, I will say that, and maybe this was a bad example, because I do think it's possible for an introverted person or someone who's a homebody to become more willing to, or to make an effort to go out more. But I do think that once someone says to you, this is who I am, all right, basically I have no intentions of changing, then there's nothing that can be fixed there. And if that issue is that important to you, because to some people, that may not be a big deal. That may be something that they can deal with and they'll just supplement the desire to go out with going out with other individuals. But for some of you, it may be a big deal. You have to ask yourself, am I willing to deal with this for years to come? Not can I deal with this for next month or this whole year. Can I deal with this for years to come? But let's go further than that, all right? Let's say uh, for some reason I'm, I'm drawing blanks with examples right now. So let me not even use an example. Let me just make the point that you've got to dig deeper to figure out if the situation is correctable or a symptom of you two are just two different people, all right? You two don't see things the same. And that's why it's important to have deep, in-depth conversations to understand what are our values? Are, do we share the same values? Do we come from different backgrounds that don't allow us or are we not flexible enough to be willing to embrace each other's differences, so to speak? All right. But also understand, you know what? One example just popped in my head. Y'all may not like this example, but I'm going to give it anyway. Okay. Let's just say you got yourself in a situation where you're not attracted to the guy. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why the hell would anybody be with someone they're not attracted to? Listen, it happens all the time, all the time, all right? So let's say you're with someone you're not attracted to them. And again, sometimes, and we can go even deeper in this, sometimes the attraction is fixable, meaning, okay, if they change their style, if they, you know, I don't know, just worked out a little bit, you, it, it might help. But in some scenarios, it's just not there. There's nothing that can be done. It can't be fixed. And again, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to be in a relationship where the attraction is not there? Can I still give my best and pour into this person, be as intimate with them, be as respectful to them, be as loving and sweet to them when I'm not attracted to them? And so if, it's, if you realize you can't handle that, and again, you realize that with this individual, there's not much they can do to fix that, then there's no point in trying anymore, all right? Now again, that may not have been the greatest example, but the principle remains the same. Certain things are fixable. And yes, part of it being fixable is the willingness from that person to fix it. And that's why it goes back to discussing these things, laying out on the table. But if someone is telling you, this is who I am, if someone is telling you, I don't want to do that, if someone is telling you, I am not willing to make this change, then there's nothing you can fix there. And at that point, you've got to let him go because to continue trying with him, it's only going to drain you and destroy you in the process. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Listen, you deserve a man who loves you, respects you, and cherishes you. Do not settle for less. So please understand, if he does any of the things I'm going to mention in this video, it is time to let him go.